Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, we would like to say that this work is not only carried out by the two of us, but also uh, with Banner Osterhaus and Stephen Peterson. Um, on the basis of the current discussion about the common European daylight standard, um, we have carried out a sensitivity analysis of different daylight matrix um, according to find out um, a common uh, European approach. Um, currently, most daylighting standards and recommendations are based on the daylight factor, which is a static metric, um, which means that it is calculated for an overcast sky condition and thereby doesn't take any uh, orientation or location into account. Um, this can create some environmental problem when we are calculating it or in also in the real case. Um, in especially in the southern country where there is a really high amount of uh, direct sunlight and passive solar gain. On the other hand, the climate-based daylight performance are uh, based on uh, dynamic sky conditions and thereby it takes orientation, location and different weather conditions into account. Um, in this study, we investigated different climate-based uh, daylight performance matrix and uh, compared the sensitivity of those for the static daylight factor. The investigated matrix are the continuous daylight autonomy, which have only an lower boundaries for the illuminance level. Um, we were also looking at the maximum daylight autonomy, which was only a find in this study for the illuminance below above 2000 lux and at the last we were um, investigated the continuous usual daylight illuminance which is defined of both and lower and an upper illuminance level. To investigate the sensitivity of the four metrics the study involves a parametric analysis. The analysis is based on a standard room um, and, and investigates the effect on each metric uh, caused by different window elements. The standard room with a normal clear glazing, uh, the standard room with a clear glazing and internal blinds, the standard room with um, the clear glazing and external blinds, the standard room with a solar coated glazing, as well as the standard room uh, with a clear glazing and an overhang. Uh, but most important for the parametric analysis is the investigation of both orientation and location specific uh, changes. Uh, to investigate the impact and variety caused by the changing European climate, four locations uh, are used for the analys analysis basis. Um, the northern location of Kiruna, and the two more central location of Copenhagen and Berlin, as well as the southern location uh, of Rome. Each metric is thus calculated for the standard room in all orientation, all locations, uh, and for the five shown uh, window elements. Uh, the sensitivity analyses are based on a standard room uh, where we are um, comparing different values in the center line of the room um, for all different parameters um, for each metric. In this graph below, we are looking at the different locations. Um, as expected, the daylight factor didn't show any variation according to the different location. But when we, an example, was looking at the useful daylight illuminance, we can see there starts to come some different variations according um, to the different location, especially for Rome has a very um, high uh, difference for the other locations. Um, the underlying bars, gray bars, at the graph is showing the UDI and the maximum daylight autonomy, and those two together is the continuous daylight autonomy, and, and the gray, dark gray bars are the partial um, credits below 200, which is not in the defined matrix. Um, to try to find out how sensitive the different matrix were, we were looking at it from uh, a standard deviation to try to get a number to uh, to see how sensitive each metric were. Um, and we can see just from the graph 
here we can already see that there is a high sensitivity um, variation between the different um, matrix. When we were calculating them and looking at them at the average, we could see that the usual daylight illuminants um, were more sensitive in average throughout the whole room than the two other uh, daylight performance matrix was. Um, and especially in the front of the room, the usual daylight illuminance uh, has uh, the highest uh, variation. When we're comparing it to the daylight factor, we can see that this is much less sensitive than the climate-based daylight performance matrix was, and from the middle of the room and into the rear end of the room, there was actually showing almost uh, no sensitivity for most of the different parameters. Besides the impact on the daylight performance metrics, the analysis also included the effects on the energy consumption of the room. What is shown here is the energy consumption for the five different uh, window elements, and for each element it's shown for the four orientations as well as the four uh, locations. The analysis only investigates the cooling, heating and lighting demands, since these are the only ones affected um, by changes in the investigated parameters. And what was found was the importance of including this composition of the, um, of the energy consumption. The different aspects of the energy consumption can be affected by uh, different, uh, can be affected very different by different changes. A change affecting the daylight performance positively uh, might reduce the need for artificial lighting, but also increase the need for cooling. Um, in general, it was seen that the highest energy consumption was in Kiruna and the lowest in Rome, but also that um, changes uh, or energy use for lighting according to changes in window properties was mainly affected in Rome. Um, if we go back to this graph showing the changes in useful daylight illuminance for one of the window elements, one could assume that a higher useful daylight illuminance would contribute to decreased energy consumption due to the reduced need for artificial lighting. Um, but we didn't find a clear tendency for this. Um, and if we draw out an example, um, the useful daylight illuminance is here shown for Rome, with respectively the northern uh, orientation in blue and the, red, uh, the, um, the southern orientation in red. Um, and the same is illustrated for Kiruna also with the, with the useful daylight illuminance to the north in blue and, and uh, to the south in red. For both locations, the graph shows that the highest uh, useful daylight illuminance is to the north, um, but when, when including the energy consumption of the room, uh, it shows that for Rome, the highest uh, useful daylight illuminance to the north goes together with the lowest energy consumption to the north. Um, but in Kiruna, um, the lowest energy consumption is to uh, the southern orientation, where the, where the useful daylight illuminance is generally lowest. Um, an increase in the useful daylight illuminance is does not necessarily um, equal to a decreased energy consumption. And changes in the useful daylight illuminance if affect um, the energy consumption very differently from location to location. Um, if we're summarizing up in this study, it shows that um, the climate-based daylight matrix were significantly more uh, sensitive to different design parameters than the daylight factor. Uh, the continuous usual daylight illuminance was with these uh, boundaries in the study. Uh, the most sensitive of the climate-based daylight performance matrix, um, and this is due that it has both an upper and a lower uh, illuminance uh, boundaries. It also showed that the changes in UDI uh, does not necessarily indicate whether it is caused by too high or too low illuminance. This is not shown. So it might could be an idea in examples special, special for the southern countries to compare them with the maximum daylight autonomy since these are only defining the highest uh, illuminance. So here you can see if this is actually causing the changes in the usual daylight illuminance. Um, in relation to the usual daylight illuminance and the energy performance, this study showed that um, it is very location-specific uh, how they are connected. Um, and therefore, uh, only an integrated daylight and thermal analysis shows um, if the changes in the usual daylight illuminance uh, 
is uh, beneficial for the overall uh, energy performance of the building. Yes, thank you for your attention. <laughs>